So we're currently at my home away from home, Suplex Vintage Wrestling. Look at all the stuff around here, bro. It is insane the amount of wrestling memorabilia that's at this store. This is my second home, honestly. Look at all these wrestling figures. Look at my boy, Mark Henry. Where's your shirt? Sammy, Cesaro, Drew, Batista. But today we're gonna interview Melina. Get some living up in here. You know what's so funny? I have like a, um, a box of DVDs and I kept thinking, what am I gonna do? I have like a yard sale, some trying to clean up everything out of the house. all your content. You, you know what, the, like a lot of people kept coming up and asking for wrestling DVDs, yeah. like they're collectors of it, and they're like, yeah, just go and you get people to sign it. I was like, oh damn, but you're with, so smart. But with everything in <laughs> EMP and then they're all gone. <laughs> So last night I went to Monday Night Raw. The night before I went to NXT Halloween Havoc. It's not, it's not focus. Oh well. Whoop that trick, boys. I love you though, but boo. We're at NXT Halloween Havoc. Oh, but Femi's daddy! Let's talk about what happened on Monday Night Raw with the Bloodline because, man, there's a lot to unpack right there. Cool. Wait, hold up. I gotta get the glasses. There, there we go. Good yeet to you, sir. Also, have you peeped the shirt? Look at this. This is not a sponsor. They just sent me some cool stuff and I just want to plug them. Like, this is awesome. I saw Jay come into the building before he made his entrance on Raw and I went to the show with a few friends and we held cut out yeet letters. But Jay made his entrance and soon came out Jimmy Uso, which I wasn't expecting, so I went crazy for. I'm here on Monday Night Raw. Being real, between Jay and Jimmy, I think Jimmy has a better theme song. I mean, it actually is nuts. We got the ones easy. But they talk about how they're gonna do this whole bloodline thing again. It has to be all of them are equal. They're all individuals. There's not Roman in the Usos. It's Roman, Jay, and Jimmy. Which I thought was a good story beat because it's important to prove that Jay is a real star outside the bloodline. Yes, the bloodline did make him. Roman did help him get to that point, help him ascend in pro wrestling. But still, right now, Jay is his own character. He does not need the storyline to still be a relevant character on Monday Night Raw. So if he's going to do this over again, he needs it to be equal. No tribal chief, even though Roman is called the original tribal chief. I, I like to see how that plays out down the line. You don't want to like acknowledge anyone. You want to be on the same playing field as everyone. That's going to be something that might come up down the line. And I'm excited to see how they play that out. And you already know the minute I saw Solo Sokoa, my tribal chief, the tribal chief, the one and only tribal chief. He got the Ulafala, he's a tribal chief. Don't hate, he is. I lost my voice within 32 seconds. Hello! After the beatdown, we saw the segment of Sami Zayn talking to Jay and Jimmy, but he's really just trying to talk to Jay, telling him that it's not Solo that caused all the trauma that went through Jay's life for so many years. It was Roman's fault, so why are you going back to Roman? Similar to how Kevin Owens is mad at Cody Rhodes, like, why are you team with Roman? We've been trying to fight this battle for so long, and now you're gonna go team with the boy? All that hard work they put in to get away from the bloodline, he's just gonna jump back into it head first. And Jay delivers a line that I could tell that even bothered him. You're not even family, ugh. But Sammy Uso is so Usi. Do I look dumb with these on? Should I take these off? Ah, nah, yeet. <laughs> Later on in the night when we saw Jimmy Uso leave the building, him and Jay caught Sami Zayn talking to Solo. Now, what could they have been talking about? Because obviously this is a low blow to both of the Usos, especially Jay, who's just trying to fight off these bad guys that are also his family members that are causing him so much pain because they cost him his Intercontinental Championship. And Sami's just gonna go talk to the ops like that is crazy. But remember when Sami Zayn was in the bloodline, he played like the glue that keep people together. When Jay was in trouble with Roman, Sami Zayn is the one that kept Roman from attacking Jay. Sammy's always been that guy. He's a peacemaker. That's kind of his thing. So it's not that surprising to see him talking to Solo Sokoa, but also, why? What was the conversation? I'm sure we're going to learn about that. And that leads into Crown Jewel. It's going to be a six-man tag team match. Roman Reigns and the Usos, or NJ and Jimmy Uso, taking on Solo's bloodline. Three members of Solo's bloodline. Now, since we're doing the OG versus the 2.0, I would love to see Solo in his original bloodline of him and the Tongans. Now, Y'all know I love Jacob. 
Jacob's the man. But if we're gonna do an original bloodline, why not have the original bloodline versus Solo's original bloodline, which is those three? And then you can start including the other people because obviously Jacob's gonna be involved somehow. And there's no way that Sami Zayn's not gonna be in Saudi Arabia. So if Jacob starts to get involved, maybe Sami comes out for the save, but maybe Jimmy doesn't like that. He super kicks Sami. This is what I think is actually gonna happen. I think Jimmy gets really upset with Sami and he tries to super kick him and trying to eliminate Sami from the equation. Jacob actually gets back in. Bloodline 2.0 eventually take over and they get the win in Saudi Arabia. I mean, hey, Solo did beat John Cena last year. So go from beating Cena and Roman back to back years, that's nuts. Cause then that could lead in Survivor Series where obviously Bloodline OG will probably end up getting that win, including Sami Zayn into that. I'm really interested what happens during this Crown Jewel match. Now we can tell it's something major, major is gonna happen on that show because if they're the main event, you gotta assume The Rock might be there. Now we will also probably figure out beforehand if Rock is in Saudi or not, because I'm sure someone's gonna snap a picture. There's no way they can hide that man. Uh, they will figure out if Rock is there. It's all about where it's placed on the card. If it's the opener or the main event, we can assume that The Rock might be involved in some way. Even if it's just via satellite, I feel like he might have some involvement. But overall, Monday Raw was dope outside the Bloodline stuff. If there's a local wrestling event, especially a WWE one coming near you, Go to it, bro. Pull up with your friends and just have fun. Suspend your disbelief, eat some popcorn, have some fun. Wrestling can be really cool when you stop trying to break down the mechanics of every single thing that happens. That's the first WWE show I've been to in a minute where I wasn't like a media person. I wasn't there to take notes about what to talk about during a press conference if I got called on, try to make 17 different pieces of content. I just went there just to enjoy it, just to pull up and have fun. In the comments down below, let me know the last WWE show you've been to or if you're going to one in the future and what happens at Crown Jewel with the Bloodline. The same turn on the OG and join the 2.0? Does he try to assist OG and is there resistance from that? What's gonna happen at Crown Jewel? Let me know in the comments down below. My name's Malcolm and we're out.